begin showing our integration between PLM 360 and Autodesk Vault, we're going to start in the Project Management Workspace. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a new project. So I'm going to go in, uh, give it a name, uh, decide who my team members are, and an uh, important step down here is to create Vault Location. And now that we're done, we'll save that out and we'll go take a look in Vault. Switching over to Autodesk Vault, we'll just simply uh, open Vault Explorer, log in, and with a quick refresh, there I see the 001 Shanko project that I just created inside of PLM 360. So that checkbox that was in that workspace uh, went in, created a Vault uh, folder, and uh, now I'm ready for the next step, which is where I'm going to go back into PLM 360 and create an item. And in creating the item, it's also going to go and create a file based off of a template here inside of Vault. All right, so here uh, I have my project. I'm actually going to uh, jump right over, and we're going to go under another category and go into the Item and Bombs workspace. Now, like we did before, we created a new uh, PLM 360 project and created a folder in Vault. We're going to create a record here. We're going to create an item and I'll give it a description. I'll make sure that I tether it to the correct project. So if I come down to the bottom of the list, there's my Shanko. Here I can select a template to use and so let's just use a DWG and we'll go in and uh, fill in the, the rest of the details. Now on save, this is going to go and create a file inside of Vault. All right, the file's been created. I'm going to base this off of a DWG. I've given it a classification down here, so it's going to get an automatic part number, 330 dash, and then whatever is the next in the sequence, and I'll click on Save. So with the record created inside of PLM, let's jump over into Vault. Let's go take a look. And sometimes you might have to uh, wait a couple seconds, come back into Vault, and either hit F5 or Refresh up here. And there's the file. Now you'll notice that the file, uh, the lifecycle state is currently work in progress. And certainly that matches up with PLM 360. Uh, the lifecycle is working. Uh, not a direct match, but you'll get the idea. Uh, the next step is to take this particular file and release it. And to do so, just like we used PLM to create the folder uh, and the project, we used uh, PLM to create the record, therefore the DWG, we're going to use PLM 360 as a mechanism to release the file inside a vault. Now remember along the way you can always hit uh, refresh both inside a vault and inside of the browser that you're running. And what you'll notice is upon refresh you might have to again wait a little bit. It will come back and actually give you the name of the file. Uh, in this case it is uh, the uh, DWG Rev A. It'll also return back from Vault a link to the file, um, a mechanism to open the file, and uh, the all revs links. We'll take a look at this a little bit later. So remember, this is a two-way street. Even though PLM seems to be um, creating a lot and, and driving a lot of this, information does come back from Vault. So let's take a look at how we release this particular record, therefore releasing the file inside of Vault. Up at the top inside of PLM, we have a button here called Create Relationships. And through here, we go and follow this all the way through. We can actually go and create a change order on the fly. Now, of course, we could stop, go out, create a change order. But I like to sometimes work uh, noun verb as opposed to uh, verb noun. So I'm going to fill out the rest of this. And that's going to build a change order, take that record, and put it on the change order. And we'll proceed with the process. So in order to complete this, all you need to do is fill out all of the necessary information, choose your approvers, click Save and Add. And when you're done, the file that you've created is actually bound to a change order. And over here on the associated change orders, you can see the new change order that was created. And the nice thing about PLM Everything is connected, which means I can click right on here and it'll take me right to that particular change order.
So meanwhile, over in the ECO, I'm going to click on the affected items, the item details. I have all of the information I need. I have all of the approvers necessary. Let's go and click on edit. Now remember, this is just one file, but I could have dozens of files in here that I'm doing the same thing. It's a good idea to group everything together onto one common change order, one common idea or action. That way it releases all the files all at once, and that'll uh, be important coming up. We'll talk about the Promote Vault children over here. But for now, since this is an unreleased file, I'm going to bypass the design phase and go directly to release, and that's going to uh, incur an alpha revision. Uh, there's no impact. Now over here, there's an option to promote the vault document. That means, do I want to uh, uprev and lifecycle or, or bump the document? If this DWG had children underneath it, and it's quite possible it could, a DWG could be used as an inventor drawing file type, or it could be an AutoCAD file with XREFs. I could optionally do that, but since um, you know, we're just going to take it easy here and do one at a time, you'll get the idea. Click on Save. And we're next. We're ready for the next part of the process. Moving on, uh, we're going to skip some of these other tabs in here because they don't really affect uh, this particular demonstration. We're going to come right down to the workflow actions, and it's within the workflow actions where we start to go through the process of release. Now, depending on your workflow, it really doesn't matter what workflow you have, but the important thing is you get down to this release state. This release state with the uh, the gears on here is what's known as the managed state. And in the managed state, that's where things actually happen. So I'm going to methodically just move through the workflow. And I'll take the scenic route and go through CCB. All right. And I'm going to actually stop here where it says uh, change control board review because we haven't taken a peek at vault just yet so I want to stop and let's go on to what's happening to that file okay so meanwhile back in vault here's the file it's work in progress now you don't always have to refresh sometimes just going back into the folder taking a look around as you go in in and out of different screens uh, it will refresh as it repaints uh, but just by doing that notice that the file is now for review so it's actually uh, something that is being affected directly by PLM 360. In fact, if I take a look and uh, go with the layout, you'll see actually the state is going to move for review. And now the next step is to actually release this. Back to PLM. We're in the change control board. I'm going to go and take that next step for final approval. That'll move it down to an implementation phase. And I'm going to just quickly bypass that go right into implementing the change order. This is going to move it down to release. Okay, so the change order is over, it's done. It's released. If I take a look at the affected items, it's now calling it revision A. It is released. If I go and take a look actually at that component, we'll see that the life cycle state is called production. And for all intents and purposes, this is released. So let's take a look at Vault and see what the equivalent is. Here we go back in Vault. As you remember, F5, refresh. And as you can see, the file is released. So we've actually, from creating the project all the way through creating the uh, record, therefore creating the file and using the change order, we have been uh, manipulating Vault uh, from the, the helm of PLM 360. So now let's take a look at what happens when this goes through a change. Okay, so to bring a file out of a release state inside a vault and back into a working state, we're going to actually use a change request. Ultimately, a change order is what we'll use to uh, take it back, but to bring it uh, out and make it something that can be worked on, we're going to first request to work on it. So let's go over to the change request workspace and take a look. Much like we did before, we're going to create a new record. And so I'll give this new record a title. We'll decide on a few other factors. Some of the things that we'll do down here is we can add a description and a purpose. You can even, the idea of a change request, you can even put in what the impact of the change might be by contacting different uh, groups putting in an overall cost. This helps determine whether or not the request is, va is valid. Uh, but what's going to be very important down here is to create an ECO on approval. We're going to want to say uh, yes if we want this to go all the way through. Okay, so I 
given it a title to work with. Down here I've selected myself as both the um, evaluation and the CCB approver and then down here create change order if it all goes all the way to an approval state. So save this. Now that we have the paperwork done on the front end, let's go to the effect. This is very similar to the change order tab uh, that calls out the actual items. In fact, we're going to go and add the item in question. And if you know what it is, you can go and browse to it. If not, you can go and type in what it should be. Click on Next and Save. And what this particular integration does is if I go back in and click on Edit, there's a checkbox here to create a work in progress. So that means at the end of this workflow, it will go and take that released vaulted file and move it back to a WIP state or work in progress state. So let's go and do that. Much like we did before, we're going to skip over some of these tabs and jump right over to the workflow. Now within the workflow, just a matter of making sure that we go through all of the different workflow states. Remember that in order to do this, you must be part of the approval team that can do it. And in this case, I'm going to go and take the final step and move it to finished. So this did a few things. First, if we go back to the change request details, also known as the item details tab, recall down at the bottom with that prompt create ECO on approval, I clicked on the yes radio button, it actually went and created an automatic change order for me. So let's go and take a look at that. Now over here in the change order, if I take a look at the bottom of the change order, here's the change request that it was created from. And now next, let's go and take a peek inside of Autodesk Vault and see what's going on with that file. Now back here inside of Vault, we'll go and take a fresh look. And we notice that the file, the DWG, has been moved back from release to a work in progress state. And the cycle continues. Come over here, take that record in question, we'll do a production revision, select no impact, and of course to uh, we want to promote the vault document. And as you can imagine, all we need to do now is go through the rest of the uh, workflow actions and move this down to released. And fast forwarding, we'll go and route this through the change order real quick. stop off and change control board back here inside of vault refresh the page take a look at revision B it's now for review which means it's uh, which means it's locked and it's on its way to being released now to finish up we'll go and do our final approval and we'll move the change order down to released.